Hey, you must be here for the room tour. Come on in. The movie's just getting ready to start. Come on. Uh, take your shoes off. Have some respect. Base guy here. Welcome to Room Tour 2022. We do this every single year for all my new subscribers that we gain throughout the year. And just in case you don't know what I have in my system, I like to go back and do a full year recap of everything that I have in my room, especially because I'm always changing things out. We bought some new speakers this year and changed the room around and got a new screen and projector. So there's a lot of new cool things that I've gotten throughout this year. So I want to make a room tour for you guys. So we're going to go through my screen, my projector, my sound system, head over to the AV rack, talk about my seating, and then my future plans for my home theater. So if you like anything that's in this video, I'll try to link in the description everything that's in this video if I can. I'll try to remember my model numbers too. There's a lot of stuff in here, so I'll try my best to remember the model numbers. And everything that's in this video has a review video. So if you want to see more about a particular item, there is a review video on my channel about it already. So go back and watch those. But Let's head on to the room tour. So I'm gonna start this video showing off the AV rack. The rack itself is from Amazon and the maker of the rack is Samsung. I think it's like a 20U rack or 19U, 19U rack is what I think it is. So it's not as tall as it can be, but it's not as small. It cost me around 200 or 250 at the time. It has wheels on the back or on the floor. It's open back so everything can breathe. I can access everything on it. I can put maybe four or five shelves on there, maybe a little bit more depending on what components I have but I like the rack a lot it handles a lot of weight easy to maneuver it wasn't hard to set up and so it really changed my home theater because for the majority of my time on my channel I've had all my components just kind of laid out in the room or in the in the closet and it was a little disorganized but this helps put everything in a central area and I know that everything's being cooled and, and kept clean and dust free so the rack has been a nice addition Inside that rack at the very top is my AVM70 from Anthem that I got when it came out. I was an early adopter. There were some problems, but we got past those problems, and now it's been a solid performer, and I still gloat about this piece of equipment to this day. I love that thing so much, and that's what's at the top of my rack, uh, processing all my audio and all my video. Underneath my Anthem Avium 70 is the OSD Audio Nero X81 something other, 5180 I think it's called. That is doing all of my Atmos speakers. That is a five channel amplifier. Give me roughly, I think 100, I think it's 160 watts, 165 watts of power times five, something like that to my Atmos speakers. So they're taking care of the Atmos speakers in the ceiling that you guys will see here in just a minute when we get to my speakers. This is a solid amplifier. OSD audio, I think they're similarly built to how Outlaw, Outlaw audio, if you're familiar with the 5000 amplifier, it's built very similarly and it's, it's a solid construction. It's very, very solid. Um, really good power, really clean, nice unit, nice binding post. It's been really good for what I want to use it for, but it would be even more useful powering my floor stain speakers, but I have another amplifier for that that we'll get to in just a second. Now the next thing in my rack is my Panasonic Blu-ray player. Uh, I think this is the 820K, oh, I can't remember. On. Yeah, the UB820K is what it is. And it is also a solid performer. And it still gets a lot of use in my home theater, believe it or not, because I have a ton of DVDs. I still buy DVDs for the most part uh, for movies that I really wanna see. Um, so I still use it. I don't use it for streaming or anything. It does have streaming apps and stuff. I use it strictly for 4K Ultra HD disc, and it is awesome. I still love it. Although I wish I could get a Kaleidoscape, but they cost you an arm and a leg, but eventually I'll give my arm and a leg away to get one, but just not right now. So that's what's still in there right now. And then underneath the UB820K is my um, power conditioner from Sandavo. They actually sent that out to me for review, and it is awesome. It has like, I don't know, 14 outlets on it 
and it of course conditions the power in there, keeps a, a voltage reading so I know if things are spiking or, or not. Um, and it also, um, it's a power uh, protector, it's a surge protector. So uh, I believe wholeheartedly in protecting all of your investment by plugging it up on a very powerful and very well known power surge protector because I have lost an AV receiver in the past to some lightning and I will never go through that again. It's not fail proof. It'll, it can happen, but the likelihood of it is a far less. So it gives me a peace of mind. So it's a power conditioner and it's also a power surge protector as well as just an outlet device too. So it has all of my, all of my amplifiers and all of my components are plugged into that. And so everything is safe, backed up and, and organized. So it's a really nice piece in the system. At the bottom of the rack are two really important pieces of equipment. One of them is the Crown XTI 4000, I think it is. That is powering one of my DIY subs. I made a video of making my own DIY sub because I have a Rhythmic G25 HP, we'll see in a, in a second. That's my, uh, my biggest sub. I cloned that and made my own Rhythmic G25 HP um, using some Dayton Ultimax subwoofer, so you'll see that in a second. But the Crown is powering that, giving me over a thousand watts per driver. So the sub is seeing 2000 watts RMS or something a little bit higher than that. Um, and uh, yeah, it's an awesome performer. The only complaint that I have is the fan. It's a little loud after a while, it, it can be. You can't hear it during normal movie watching or TV watching, but if it's a relatively quiet inside and it's on, it does make a lot of noise. I may swap that out soon. Um, but other than that, I have no complaints. I got it used on eBay, of course, because it's an older model, but it had a lot of power. I paid like 580 bucks or 530 bucks, and uh, yeah, I took it. So I have that powering my sub, one of my subs. And then underneath that is the, the beef in the system. That is the Monoprice model of seven times 200, powering all seven of my floor speakers, my bed layer speakers. I've had this since it came out too. Did a video on this, 100 pound beast. And uh, yeah, it sounds incredible. And I've had zero issues, knock on wood, with this unit and I love it. It is a huge compliment to my system. It pairs very nicely with the AVM70 and it absolutely destroys my speakers. I've powered it on three different types of speakers, the Polk Audio LSIM series speakers, I used it on the Canton Vento speakers, and now I'm using it on my current speakers that you guys will see here in just a moment. And it has absolutely transformed my home theater experience and music as well. So that's what's inside my rack inside the closet. So my closet, of course, hides away my AV equipment, so it's kind of a stealthy kind of look. You don't see any equipment inside the actual living room, inside the actual theater, it's all hidden away. But also resides is my movies. Like I told you, I have my Blu-ray player and I use it often. I have all my movies up here on this rack that I built, and it hangs from the clothes hanger, hanger, I guess you can call it, um, but it holds all my movies and they're all alphabetized so I can find them quickly. I am a horror fanatic. I love horror movies, even though most of them are very bad now. I still go back and watch them, which is actually crazy because they are so bad. And I do like animated movies and whatever too. So all my movies are laid out in alphabetical order. And so I can kind of go and reach and grab one and experience it for the way that I want to. I still believe that discs are the way to watch a movie at the most premium level because streaming services can't keep up with audio and streaming quality. But like I said, I want a Kaleidoscape so I don't have to keep trying to find DVDs because they're quickly out the door. Um, you're not gonna find them much longer. Streaming is the way to go. I love streaming with you know how convenient it is, but I want to experience the best audio and video quality. And right now, disc is still the way to do that. So all my DVDs are in there. And the closet as a whole is just used for me to, to put anything that I buy or things that are sent to me for review from companies, they all go into this closet here. You guys can see tons of boxes and toys and gadgets everywhere. I tend to give a lot of this stuff away. So when I do giveaways, a lot of the stuff you see in here is what I give away. Amplifiers, I've given away money, I give away Amazon cards, I've given away projectors, I've given away Blu-ray players, I've given away speakers. A lot of things that I know that I won't use, I'll put it in the closet and it becomes a giveaway later on. So I only give away to subscribers. So if you're watching and you're not subscribed, hit that button. Speaking of subscribers, if you made it this far in the video, we are doing subscriber showcase very, very soon this month. If you like this 
whole atmosphere, how I'm talking to you guys, showing off my home theater, well, you guys get to do the same thing too. Subscriber Showcase lets you guys show me your home theater. So what I want you to do is grab your phone or a camera, something like that, send me a list of all of your components, your seating arrangement, your screen, your TV, show me everything you have in a video, and I'm gonna put it on my channel. I wanna see what you're working with. I wanna see your speakers and your TV and your couch and your room and your ideas, your decor, even in car audio, I wanna see what you have in your car. So send to my email down below a video, maybe five, seven, 10 minutes, or some pictures, as well as a list of all your gear, and I'm gonna put it right here on my channel and see what you guys have at home. So don't be afraid to do that. We do it every two, we do it, what, every 5,000 subscribers, so about twice a year. And uh, yeah, it's your turn to be front and center stage. I wanna see what you guys have, no more talking about me. So to my email or my Facebook or Instagram, you guys can send me pictures and videos of your setup if you like to. We'll put it on this, uh, this year's season, season eight of Subscriber Showcase. Make sure you're a subscriber to be on there as well and we should be good to go. So moving away from the AV closet, let's go over to my two channel setup that I'm using on my desk. Now I use my desk for my series called The Desk where I do bookshelf speaker reviews. So my speakers on my desk are constantly changing. But right now what I'm using in my two channel desk setup is my Fluence Signature Series bookshelf speakers powered with an Aurelic A50 Plus, an S50 Plus amplifier and pre-amplifier. Um, that's using, uh, that's what I use on my desk to just listen to music when I'm working at the desk or when I'm playing video games, I use it to, you know, for the audio, or I may use that for music while I'm cleaning the house and keep the whole big system off when I don't want to be loud. So that's my two channel setup there with my 49 inch monitor from AOC, I believe. Um, I love that monitor. It is incredible. It is really big and everybody who comes in and sees it reacts to it because it's, I mean, 49 inches wide and it's slightly curved. That's what I use to play my Xbox Series X that is also on the desk as well. So that's my two channel setup that I use for product demos for bookshelf speakers and then I use it for my own needs when I'm working at my desk or when I'm playing video games. And the Aurelic amplifier is really, really good. There is a review on that. Um, so definitely check that video out because that is a solid amplifier that I've been using for a couple of years now. And it gives me 50 watts times two um, at eight ohms. And it's really good for bookshelf speakers like this that usually don't need a lot of power. Really good sound, has an app, has a couple tone controls, things like that. So it's a really good hi-fi system. I've had a lot of really nice speakers on the desk like Kef LS50 Metas have been up there. Triangle Berea BR03s have been up there. Clip speakers have been up there. Canton Ventos have been up there. So I had some really nice speakers on the desk, and right now, currently sitting there are the Fluence Signature Series speakers that I've done a review on too, so make sure you check out that video. So let's talk about my current skiing conditions in my home theater. My biggest goal when I moved into this apartment four years ago was that I really didn't want my living room to be a home theater. I, I have no desire, even to this day, I have no desire for my living room to be a dedicated home theater. Unfortunately, I live in a one bedroom, one bathroom apartment, so this room is the only room that can be a theater. But when I move out of this place here soon, I don't want my living room to be a home theater. I want it to be just a you know, cozy, normal living room. And so because of that, I've stuck with couches. I, I have Valencia Tuscany home theater seating that I'm not using because I don't want to lose that living room cozy feeling. So I'm just, I'm just using some regular old couches that I bought last year, last summer, I think. And they're very comfortable. They're good for me. I don't sit down in here very often, but when I do, they do do well. People always roast me on YouTube about having way too many pillows, but my mom, when I was growing up, had a big couch and she had a lot of pillows on the couch because it fills the space and makes it inviting when you're not sitting down. And you can just move them out of the way when you are sitting down. So I have a lot of pillows just for the cozy decor kind of feel, but I am using couches right now. I have two black Tuscany seats from Valencia that I will use again whenever I move out. I was using them before when I first had them sent to me for review. Um, but I went back to having couches because I just want that living room feel for now. So I am using a couch and a love seat in this room here. And then of course I have my chair for my desk that I sit in sometimes when I have a lot of people over and we need more seating. But I do have Valencia Tuscany seats that I have currently um, in a different room stacked on top of each other, kind of hidden away until I'm ready to use those again. Now the carpet that I'm using is from Amazon. I get 
almost everything in this room from Amazon, everything actually in this room is from Amazon. And people ask me, why do I have a rug on top of a carpet? I just like the, again, that cozy aesthetic, that nice um, living room feel, because the whole rug is just this beige color and the walls are kind of cream. So it's a very warm room with no kind of life really. So the curtains and the rug and some of that stuff kind of add some pop to it, have a coffee table on top. So again, keeps that nice, living room feel and the speakers kind of hide away in the room it still feels like a living room which is what i wanted so i do have a rug in here just to add some color and some pop to the room all right so let's talk about the screen behind me this is an aki 103 inch um clr rejecting screen i think it's like a it's like an ambient ceiling ambient rejecting screen and this was sent out to me a couple months ago for review because i just recently picked up a ultra short throw projector and there are some really cool um, fibers technology in this that allows ultra short throw projectors to be at their best so this is a 103 inch screen it is a gray screen and this is awesome for those who have a lot of light or a lot of windows in your setup i have two windows in here and then all my lights are above the screen like my ceiling fan lights are above my screen and my studio lights that I use during YouTube is also above my screen. This rejects a lot of that. It has this sawtooth technology that only re reflects light coming from underneath it or directly at it, but anything coming from above it isn't reflected back into your eyes. So you get a much better contrast, much better picture, colors look good, and that washed out effect that you get during the daytime when watching projectors is a lot less uh, a pain, I guess you can call it, in the daytime with this screen. It's been an awesome screen, really thin bezels, and if you haven't heard of Akia, no problem. They are actually a sister company of Elite Screens, which I know you've heard of. So Elite Screens is amazing, and the quality of this is very similar. I mean, they are really are sister brands uh, to each other because the way that you assemble it, the type of border around it, the screen material is very similar to Elite Screens. Um, so I'm very happy to have this in my system. And also, like I said, I just purchased a Ultra or an, an Ultra Short Throw Projector not too long ago. It's a Samsung LSP9T their flagship ultra short throw projector. I purchased that a couple months ago as well. And this has been an awesome uh, enjoyment in my system too. I used to have an Optima UHD 51 ALV, I think. And it was a long throw projector, 4K, HDR, HDR10, had um, Amazon ecosystem built into it as well, Google Assistant. I switched to an ultra short throw because Two reasons. One, I have a ceiling fan and depending on where my room is set up, the ceiling fan is in the way of the projector light, the beam, the, the bulb. Um, that was one big reason for me switching. And the second reason is because uh, whenever somebody walked across the room, you walked in front of the light. I hated that. So this has changed my, my way of, of enjoying my content because it sits underneath the screen, really close to the wall in the front of the room. So it's not an obstruction to anybody walking through and it's a laser projector so it lasts forever like 10,000 20, 20,000 hours or something like that and it doesn't burn out over time it doesn't dim over time so it'll last me years 10 so years and by the time i already have bought a new one so really really good quality picture not too bad on rainbow effects i haven't really noticed it too much um uniform uniformity of of blurriness or what do you want to call it of focus is really good in the corners i don't have any issues with focus with sharpness in the corners just a solid solid projector that i've done a review on so definitely check that video out that's what i'm using for my projector of choice and it is phenomenal all right let's talk about my speakers the subwoofers first what am I using for my subs? Well, up front in my front stage, I'm using the Definitive Technology DN10 subwoofer. It is a 10 inch subwoofer with dual 10 inch passive radiators on each side. It's about 250 watts RMS, 500 watts peak, and it is a much bigger performer than its size. It is actually a really good sub. It just released early this year i think if i'm not mistaken i can't remember maybe late last year but it's really good they have an 8 inch 10 inch 12 inch i believe and they all perform bigger than they are they come in both black and white and i have the white one because it matches the aesthetic and it is a really good sub my only complaint is that it only reaches down to 22 hertz but it's really flat and it gets pretty loud anyway but it does drop off in comparison to my other two subs that i have um, so i am looking to upgrade this probably pretty soon maybe i don't know because i i want another rhythmic sub 
and that's a lot of money. So I might wait. I've been waiting until I move because I kind of don't need a third sub in this big room, or in big room in this small room. Um, so I may wait until I move. But that's what I'm using as sub number one. Sub number two is my Rhythmic G25 HP. That's my dual pose sealed sub. Has two 15 inch drivers on each side and an 1800 watt RMS amplifier on the back. And this has been a game changer. This actually replaced both of my PB 4000s from SVS and it is a truly incredible sub. Flat, flat, <laughs> but it's still authoritative. Gets down to 12 hertz, rattles everything, plays every type of genre of music with no problem, handles music, no problem. It is beautiful. It is a big sub for a sealed sub, but I'm used to ported, so I'm used to big ported subs. It's smaller than the PB4000, so it's smaller than what I came from, but every bit of the, as big of a sound, and I have no regrets at all to this day of swapping it out. I haven't even unleashed its full potential because there's so much power in this sub with the servo technology. It's worth going back and watching the review if you've never seen it before. Now, I told you guys that I decided to clone that same sub. So I did a DIY sub. I'm using um, dual 15 Dayton Ultimax um, subs inside a built enclosure that was absolutely, I mean, to the T mimicked from the Rhythmic. I called Rhythmic and Rico and said, hey man, I'm looking to clone your sub. I want to know the specs, the size, the bracing, the, um, the dampening inside of it. I wanna know the tuning frequency inside of it. What did you do to this? I'm taking it. <laughs> and so I did. I built the same exact box as the Rhythmic G25 HP and used drivers that are incredibly similar to the Rhythmic G25 HP. And I built it, I mean, I still built it to spec to fit the, the Dayton Ultimax drivers, but I use influence from the G25 HP. And it has more power than the G25 HP. It's a slight bit bigger and it plays very similarly. It doesn't, it doesn't play as flat as the Rhythmic because of the servo technology inside the Rhythmic, but it does very, very close. It's very, very powerful, has a lot of output. And I mean, it's crazy. That's what's being powered by the Crown XTI 4000. It's a beast. So those are my three subs in this small little apartment. <laughs> All right, we're now on to my actual home theater, the sound system. So let's start with the upfront stage. The center channel is the Kef R2C. A really solid and mysterious kind of center channel because when I was first building my system, I didn't realize that it was sealed, but it actually works out perfectly because of the unfortunate placement that I have to have it at because I have an ultra short the projector. I didn't have a place to put my center channel in this room. I do have some ideas in my next home, um, but where it's at right now, it's just where it has to be. So it being sealed is awesome. It's a solid center channel, nothing special, nothing crazy to say about it. Um, it does what it needs to do, and so I'm happy with it. Um, there is a review video on it, so if you're curious to know about it, I did do a review on it, but um, it's, a, it's a good center channel. That's really all I can say about it. Now, also next to the center channel are my Kef R11s. These speakers are amazing, and they replaced my Canton Vento speakers that I had before them. And these have been an exciting addition to the system because of how they look, how they sound, um, how they perform during any genre of music, how they come to life in movies. They are incredible speakers, and I've had a few different people listen to them with me, and nothing but great things to say about them. They did cost me $6,000 for the pair. Um, you can find them really lightly used or refurbished, and save yourself a good dollar. But they are very good. They are very good. And uh, I am, I, I think I've had them for three or four months now, or maybe close to that. And I love them like the day that I bought them. I listen to them every day. I stare at them every day. I love them in white. They come in several other colors, but white was the one for me. And uh, I'm not turning back. I love the system that I've built in this room. I can't wait to get to a bigger room to fully use what they're capable of. So that's my front stage right there. On my side surrounds, I'm using a 7.3.4 system, seven speakers, three subs, four Atmos speakers. So on my side surrounds, I'm using the Kef R3s for side surrounds. Those can be front stage speakers all day long, two channel setup all day long, but I'm using it as my side surrounds. And they do really good there. It's overkill because they're large, they're, they're huge, and they have a really good frequency response. They are solid performers as well. They're even good as a center channel speaker too. Um, but I'm using them as side surrounds. They cost me, I think, I bought these for 1500 for the pair. Um, really nice deal from Accessories for Less where I bought all these speakers from. They are 
quality speakers. They sound good on their own as standalone speakers. They sound good as surround sound speakers. They look good. Um, I have all my grills off because I love the way they look. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm using as my side surrounds. Now, right now in the back, my back surrounds, I'm just using old speakers right now because I haven't purchased my Q50s. I'm gonna, they're Atmos speakers, but I'm gonna hang them on the wall. There's not a lot of space between the wall and the back of the couch, so I can't put a big speaker back there. I was gonna buy another set of R3s as my back surrounds, but the R3s are too deep, so I have to pull my couch way too forward. So I'm gonna buy some Kef Q50s and hang them on the wall, and they will be my surround sound speakers for for the time being, and then when I move, I'll get some dedicated bookshelf speakers back there. So right now I'm just using some old Rinky Dink 60 buck speakers to just to fill in the sound back there until I decide to get something else. So the Atmos speakers that I'm using, I've been using for a while, and those are the trusty Prime Elevations from SVS. I have two different colors because I bought black first when I had black speakers, and then I swapped out a pair for white. I haven't changed the other ones to white. Um, but in the front, I'm using on-wall Atmos speakers, and those are angled downward, pointing towards my listening position. Those are my front Atmos speakers. That's what's being powered by the OSD audio amplifier. So those are getting nice, clean power. They're across over 80 hertz, so they're pretty, Pretty capable speakers, to be honest with you. And they do really good as front on wall speakers. And then I have, again, another pair of SVS Prime Elevations above my couch hanging from the ceiling that's giving me my Atmos effects in the rear as well. And those sound really good there too. A really nice alternative if you can't put dedicated speakers into the ceiling in your home, those are awesome alternate speakers and they do every bit of the same thing really and they're not they don't cost as much as it would for you to have to install them into the ceiling if the right way so i have atmos speakers for those as well and then i have seven speakers on the floor so that's a 7.3.4 dolby atmos dtsx system here inside this small little apartment do my neighbors hate me no they don't i don't really get any complaints ever. I don't have anybody knock on my door. I don't have anybody slip a note. I don't have anybody do anything. I've had one noise complaint four years ago and since then I haven't had one. I don't even know if they even know what I do on YouTube. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Now, one thing that I don't want to leave out is the black wallpaper behind my screen. You may have noticed that out of all the walls, there is black behind my screen. This is a pill and stick wallpaper that I got on Amazon, and this has actually really transformed my home theater. I did this about a month ago, and it really adds a cool element to my movie watching because um, having the black screen, or excuse me, having the black wall has eliminated some of the reflections that you get when watching TV and watching your projector, because especially for the laser, it doesn't bounce against the white wall anymore. It's really mute. I don't have any extra added reflections other than what's coming from the screen. Also, what I found was really cool is that the screen has a black border around it, a black trim, but it blends in with the wall. So it really looks like a big TV just floating on the wall, flat against the wall. A really cool effect that I did not try to get on purpose, but I'm very much happy with it. So if you have a screen that has a black border, which most all screens do, small or thick, put a black wallpaper or black paint behind your screen and it makes the border either look smaller or just disappear completely. And now all you have left is screen real estate. And so when you're watching um, movies in the daytime or dim light, that border's gone. So it just looks like a screen hanging from the wall. I can't tell you how many times somebody's came in here and said, whoa, that's a huge TV. I'm like, that's not a TV, guys. It's a projector screen. So it's a really cool effect. So I recommend you guys try it. I did talk about it in a dedicated video. So go back and check that out as well. So the last thing that I wanna mention before we round things out, guys, is the acoustic treatment that I'm using inside this room. I do have tons of it. So of course the carpet, the rug, all that stuff is also added treatment. The curtains that are on the wall are added treatment. It's all from Amazon. I do have some acoustic treatment behind me, underneath the screen and behind my speakers. These are foam wedges. They're about two, uh, are they two inches deep? I think at their deepest point, they're about three inches deep. I think most of it's about two inches deep. And those are sound absorbers for echo, so slap echo. Those high frequencies that ring, or when I'm talking, or when I'm watching a, a movie or a, music, a piece of music that has a lot of high-end notes, those things kind of flutter and bounce around the room. Those help eliminate that. They do nothing for bass. They don't soundproof the room, of course. They're just foam, dense 
thick foam with some kind of diffuser on the front, but they help with my high pitched noises so that when I'm talking to you guys, you don't hear an echo. And when I'm watching movies or listening to music, you don't have an echo. So my room's pretty dead. There isn't much slap echo in here. You do want a little bit so that's not unnatural, but there's almost none in here. So that's really, really nice. So that's what those are for. I do have some acoustic art here above my desk monitor. The piano art here, those are also really nice acoustic panels there to help with reflections on that wall. Helps with my first reflections there. I can't do anything much about the other wall because there's a window there, but the curtains do a little bit of work. And then I do have some JIK acoustic uh, panels. These are diffuser slap of slash absorbers that help my mid-range bass. So what comes out of my speakers is what those are attacking. So uh, it helped with a nice little peak that I had in the mid bass. It's brought that down, tamed it a little bit. Also helps with a little bit of slap echo. Has a wide frequency that they help. So they're actually really good for a big genre of frequencies, but their core is mid bass. So it really helps tame some of that deep, hefty present that gives you like a muddy type of feeling, it eliminates a lot of that. So I have two of those, and of course when I get a bigger room, I'll get more of those, because they do cost like almost 400 for two, for two of them. So I'll get a couple more when my room gets bigger, and uh, it'll definitely benefit my room a lot, no matter what house I'm in. So those are from JIK, and they are awesome. They, them, them as a whole is awesome. They have tons of options to choose from. I did do a dedicated review on those as well, so you guys can check that video out if you wanna learn more about that. All right, guys, we're gonna end the video there. I guess the last thing that I can say is the speaker wire that I'm using. I'm using Gearit speaker wire from Amazon, Gearit braided cable. So it's, it's a banana plugs, it's um, braided, it's twisted, um, and then it's shielded. And there, there are preset lengths. So all my speakers are using Gearit braided um, cables from Amazon. They don't cost very much, very high quality. They're 12 gauge, so they can take they can send a lot of power to and from my speakers and my amplifier. So they're very good, I've had them for years. They are excellent. They have really nice banana plugs. They fit really snug into the terminals of my speakers. I've used them on a lot of different speakers and they do very well. Um, so I recommend them if you need some speaker wire or need to upgrade. And uh, as far as how I connect my amplifiers to my AVM70, I'm using, um, what are they? I can't remember the brand. Um, Oh man, I, I'll try to link it down in the description, but they're um, XLR cables. I use XLR cables to connect my audio uh, between my, my amplifiers and my AVM70 to get the best cleanest sound path and the best connection possible. I don't use RCAs on anything. My subwoofer is actually wirelessly connected um, to my system. I'm actually going to put that as XLR too. My rhythmic sub can be connected to XLR. My crown amplifier except XLR. So most, if not all my system is not using RCA cables whatsoever. I have um, XLR for almost everything in here just to get the cleanest signal, the most balanced, unbalanced signal that I can. Um, so that's gonna be it for the video. Uh, that's my room tour for 2022. It changes all the time. I'm sure early next 2023, I'm gonna have some new stuff. Hopefully I'll be in a new place, my own home, where I can turn things up and play around and be loud and not have to worry about anybody. I cannot wait for that. I want a dedicated home theater room. I want a dedicated home theater studio for YouTube. Um, so I can take everything out of my living room and just have a studio for that. So that's going to be really cool. I think once I move out of this place, it's going to really shoot my channel upward and onward. Um, as long as I'm in here, I'm always going to be limited, you know. But once I move, it's going to take the channel to a whole new level because we can have so much more fun in here. I can be louder and I'll have a dedicated studio where I can do dedicated product reviews and things like that for you guys. I cannot wait so thank you guys so much for watching everything that i mentioned today will be in the description down below if you saw anything in the video that I did not mention that you're that you're curious of let me know i'll tell you what it is and where i got it and if you want no pricing uh, it's all going to be in the description down below as far as i know all the links will work um, as of this video but things change over time so uh, everything's on amazon for the most part so take a look at those links down below if you want to get some of this stuff for yourself Hit the like button, subscribe if you are not already. Make sure you enter into Subscriber Showcase later on this month, and we'll see you in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace. You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high. 
Even if the sky is falling down 